everyone. My name is Kevin Lance, and I'm the Director of, Mark of Analytics Marketing at Unchained Labs. I'll be your moderator, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, at the end of today's webinar, we'll have a Q&A session. So if you're watching the webinar go through and you have a question you want to ask, all you have to do is hit the Q&A button at the top or bottom of your screen in the Zoom navigation bar and type out your question. When submitting a question, please avoid clicking on the anonymous button so that way we can reach out via email uh, if we don't happen to get to your question during this webinar. Um, and we will get to as many of them as we can. And now I'd like to introduce Nilis Dinas, Product Manager for Lunatic and Stunner at Unchained Labs. And today Nilis will walk us through our fast low volume method for getting tighter empty full ratio and aggregation state from AAV samples, including some case studies and some published data. And now I'll hand it over to Nellis. Nellis, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm, I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's start. Okay. Okay, let's dig right into it. Thank you for that introduction. Thanks for everyone attending this talk. Dig into the details of AAV Tiger and Empty Full with Stunner. Now, not all surprises are fun. Things are things that unexpectedly show up floating in your lunch, in your lunch for sure aren't. So for AAV research, you don't want nasty surprises to show up suddenly either. A good way to avoid any surprises is quickly checking what you actually have. But current analytical techniques for AAV are either slow or slow and annoying to perform. Well, I have a surprise for you today, but it's one of the good ones. Finding out what you have with classic techniques like qPCR or DDPCR, ELISA, AUC, or even HPLC takes way too much sample and which, way too much time. So if you need to know right away what you have, what tighter you have, how many capsids you have, full or empty, or just to know if your sample is aggregated, you could be out of luck with those slow techniques. And we all know that AAV is a truly complex biologic. It consists of a protein capsid assembled by three different viral proteins in a, different, in a certain ratio, and it contains a single-stranded DNA vector inside. Now, when characterizing your AAV, you have a lot of things going on. You want to know a lot of things. So how much protein do I actually have? How much DNA do I actually have? Are my capsids intact? Is it at the right size? If there's any aggregation or anything like that. Now, we can uh, focus in on two technologies, DLS and UVVIS. Each of them are powerful, but they are incomplete. So they tell a part of the story. DLS gives you capsid titer information, can give you aggregation information, um, but actually doesn't say anything about the DNA. Uh, is there actually DNA in, inside my capsids? While if you're using UVVIS, you can get total protein numbers, you can get total DNA numbers, you can even um, get a DNA to protein ratio, so a percent full ratio, um, but it doesn't say anything about is this actually even contained into capsids? So we don't anything like that. Um, each of them get valuable information separately, but none of them are, are actually complete. So what if you could combine both of them? And that is exactly what we do at Stunner. So we check out your AV with DLS, and that will tell you what shape your sample is in, if you have only capsids or if there's aggregation that's starting to ruin things. And during that DLS measurements, uh, we also see how much SLS intensity is actually coming from just our AAV capsids, uh, which is here shown as the green peak on the left. And then in gray, we see aggregates, anything that's larger than our expected capsid size. UVVIS next to that brings in the information on how much total protein we have, how much total DNA we have. And you tell Stunner some basic information and it will do calculations for you to give you your percent full number based on your UVVIS results. So to explain that a bit more step-by-step, step, Stunner will first identify true DLS, uh, what amount is your capsids, and if there's aggregation, it will show your aggregation, and then how intense the signal is of each of those populations. And so in the middle, you can see that info then helps up your total scattering signal, your total intensity, to be split it up in what comes from purely your capsids and what comes from your aggregates. Um, when we're looking at that signal purely from capsids, that will be a combination of the scattering from the empty capsids and the full capsids altogether. And then we're looking at UVVIS 
data um, to know what is the empty full ratio and also do we have actually enough protein and DNA to build even these capsules. So that all together provides a complete puzzle. Now to show that how it would look in the software, um, the whole story pretty much in one graph. We see a, a large blue bar on the left. The total blue bar is all the protein in your sample determined by UVVIS. And then that pretty much means uh, the amount of protein uh, that you have to create uh, as many capsids as you want. So with that total amount, we can calculate how many capsids can I actually make with this amount of protein. Um, and then we add in the DLS and SLS info. So we look at what is at the correct size. And so we'll split up your total protein bar in what is actually coming from capsids and this protein. So the dark blue bar is the total capsid bar. And then the remaining is protein aggregates or free floating protein, which is shown in light blue here. And then on the right hand, pretty much the same story for DNA. So the total green bar is all the DNA uh, from UVVIS that absorbed. And so pretty much how many gene inserts can I make of the size you specified with this amount of DNA uh, to get a titer. And then we're gonna look at DLS and SLS again, bringing that information to split that signal into what is actually coming from full capsids. You have protein enough, DNA enough, and it's at the correct size to br bring in that um, dark green bar. And then the remainder again is free floating or aggregated DNA. And so here again, if you would combine uh, your dark green and dark blue bar, that will give you a percent full number. So Stunner brings it all together to deliver answers on capsid titer, empty full ratio, and aggregation with just two microliter of sample in less than a minute. And this all without labels, reagents, or standards. You're just using the sample you've got. Now, how does that all work? We have a special consumable. And here we can see how sample loading looks like in our consumable. So with some help of fluorescein and a black light. In two wells, you can see already that there's already two microliter of fluorescein inside. And now, um, as you can see, just to load another sample, it's simply you just add it in and the sample wicks into the plate, nicely ready to be read. If we're looking a bit more in detail, on the left, you can see a similarly loaded samples like that that are ready to be run. And on the right, you can see samples that have already been measured. So you can see those two diamond shapes or cuvettes that are actually um, for our sample. So one sample will have two cuvettes and we'll have readings from that. What this also shows is that all the, after pumping, all the sample will remain in your consumable. So there's no risk of contamination um, or cross-contamination between samples. Everything stays nicely in our consumable. So from just those two microliters of sample, you get information from a combination of technologies, UVVIS for concentration, DLS for sizing, and we'll get the SLS intensity during that DLS read. Um, samples can be read from one to 96 at a time, and Stenner's AAV Quan application will combine all of the information that it gets from these two technologies um, and piece it all together to give you as much information as it can um, for your AAV sample. So now let's look at some actual samples. Um, here in this case, we ran an AAV5 on Stunner. Uh, the DLS looks pretty good. There's a very small aggregation there. Um, and the green capsid peak is most of the signal. Now, if we look at the final calculations, Stunner combines it all together. And you can see that there's a very small um, light blue and light green bar. So the free and aggregated protein or DNA. Most of it is in dark blue, dark green. And so almost all of your sample um, is actually in the capsids you want um, from UVVIS. So we've confirmed that aggregation is not a big deal here. Um, we have all the titers we need. So the total capsid titer, the full capsid titer, we get an empty full ratio as well. And we'll, we're getting aggregation information as well. Pretty good amount of data from just two microliters in one minute. Now we're gonna look a bit more into our ability to see percent full samples, uh, percent full values. So we took stocks of empty and full AAV9 and we mixed them at different ratios. So for each combination, 100% full stock, 80% full, 
and so on. Stutter gets a good read on the data and the percent full and the percent empty align well with our expected values. And what the great thing here is the application works for any serotype. So you just tell Stunner the basics about which serotype you have and what its DNA payload is, and Stunner will take care of all the rest of the heavy calculating. Now, if you try to fake out Stunner, this is what happens. So if you put IgG and DNA together in a sample to mimic a full capsid, or you just do IgG alone to mimic an empty capsid, Stunner knew what was there, and you can see that almost everything is in light green and in light blue because there's no capsid peak in the DLS. Um, and so you can't fool Stunner. If iodixinol would be part of your process, it's also useful to know exactly how much iodixinol you have in your sample and to check on your iodixinol concentration if you're doing a buffer exchange. So after each buffer exchange, Stunner can help out here as well and it will detect iodixinol in your sample as low as 0.0005% by volume. Okay, let's look into some other techniques. So for getting capsid titer um, versus ELISA, Stunner is way faster and it will require a lot less lab work in general. So here, you took, here we've taken full or empty AV9s and run a dilution series um, and ran them both on ELISA and ran them on Stunner. We're looking at the total capsid titer. The results have slopes close to one and the R squared values are above 0.99. But most importantly, it would have taken hours to get this ELISA data while Stunner's done it in less than an hour with no sample prep at all. In collaboration with Stride Bio, we've compared Stunner versus DDPCR. Um, for genome titers, for two AAV types, so single-stranded AAV and also self-complementary AAV, which is the one on the right. So the genome titer of the single-stranded AAV sample was characterized using a robust variety of DDPCR experiments to best capture the titer, while the tight error bars on Stunner come from a single run of triplicate samples. For the self-complementary AAV, uh, the optimized DDPCR protocol was used and compared uh, very, fav very favorably uh, to quantification by Stunner. And working with Stride Bio again, we examined how Stunner's quantification of percent full compares with AUC for a highly purified sample. So AUC was read for the highest enriched percent full sample and the lesions with empty capsids were made to create a target percent full. You can see that AUC and Stunner correlate very nicely and both are highly linear. Um, as shown by the very high R squared values. But more importantly, AUC would require orders of magnitude more sample that's done and will take a lot more time. Now, where can we use Stunner as well for looking at AAV? For example, to test after you stored your AAV. Um, normally checking AAV storage conditions is a slow process and it's made even slower when the only tools you have are actually functional ethics. So storage condition, storage experiments are made more complicated because some AV serotypes tend to aggregate more than others. So functional assays might tell you you have lost infectious titer, but you won't know why. Stunner's DLS shows if a sample has aggregated so you can tell when a sample of AV has gone bad without wasting time on cell-based assays. So here we're looking at two um, distributions of AV2 and AV9, both stored at four degrees for about two weeks. And you can clearly see that for AV2, there's a lot of aggregation going on, while for AV9, everything is nicely one peak um, and the dark blue and the dark green bars are almost to the top. So Stunner will help you to quickly reject samples you know won't work in the long run or in your cell-based assays. And that will save you time and means you can focus on the samples you know will actually work. Similar story for choosing the right buffer in your formulation study. It's absolutely necessary. Um, for example, definitely when it comes to pH. So if you're using a tool that is slow and takes too much time uh, to characterize or look at your different buffers, it could be that you miss out for the optimal buffer because you're limited uh, to the amount of candidates you can check. In this case, we're looking again at a different AAV9s 
um, in a different buffer. One is pH 4, one is pH 7, and both were heated to 45 degrees uh, for about 25 minutes. So here you can clearly see in the neutral buffer, uh, the AV9 stays pretty much as it is, while um, in the acidic buffer in pH 4, a lot of aggregation is showing up. So Stunner will make it easy to evaluate more buffers and stress conditions than traditional methods while also providing you tighter results and empty full ratio. Stunner has been helping a lot of companies with their AAVs. To visualize that a bit as well, you can read all about it in this recent publication from Trivity et al. They are comparing AAV samples from different production methods, either by PEI transfection or HEP herpes sim, uh, simplex virus infection and using Stunner as one of the analytical techniques. Here we can see nine batches of AAV lots were read by both qPCR and Stunner for the genomic titer. Stunner and real-time qPCR correlate very well. Stunner reads are reagent-free, standard-free, and only take seconds. Further in the paper, this genome titer will be used as the first half of the AAV's percent fall. And then a second experiment was to measure total protein to get the capsid titer, which will be used at the nominator to calculate the percent fall. Here we can see very good correlation between the traditional BCA assay and Stunner to get a total protein concentration across the different production methods. Compared to BCA, Stunner uses, again, no reagents, no standards, and makes it a lot faster with less hands-on time. And finally, to get that percent full value, the researchers either divided the genome titer by the capsid titer, and they had capsid titer from either BCA or ELISA, or they used Stunner's direct percent full output um, overall. The ELISA capsid titers they generated, which weren't in the previous graph, were two times higher than the BCA or Stunner. And that's also explaining why the percent full values here are a lot lower uh, for ELISA. ELISA is more rigorous technique, but it gives a lot more variable data. Stunner will deliver more precise results in a one-step direct measurement while also giving the genome titer and the capsid titer. So from only two microliters, Stunner will combine UVVS, DLS, and SLS data to tell the whole story about your AAV, delivering mountains of data about sample aggregation, AAV full and empty capsid titer, and empty full ratio. And in addition to the capabilities we've discussed so far, Stunner also meets the needs of labs working in larger scale. For these high throughput needs, the plates used for Stunner are compatible with liquid handling robots. We also offer Ikeoki services and Stunner software is 21 CFR part 11 compliant with full audit trail and electronic signature capabilities. So that is how Stunner delivers label-free, standard-free and hassle-free gene therapy quant. So become in charge of everything on your plate and be the king in your kitchen. Select only the best ingredients and monitor your lunch while cooking with Stunner. And now it's time for questions. All right, that's my signal pop back on. Uh, so thanks, Nellis, and, and thanks for taking us through how to use Stunner to look at tighter, empty full, aggregation, and, and even the iodixonol quantification, kind of a really widespread of things there. Uh, and then also for showing us some data comparing Stunner to AUC, BCA, and, and PCR methods. Uh, so we have some, some great questions already submitted in the uh, Q&A option through Zoom. So you can still ask a question if you're out there in the audience by entering into the Q&A uh, section of your Zoom navigation bar at the top or bottom of your screen. And so I'll start here at the top of the Q&A. Uh, so I scan multiple serotypes to find uh, the best one for my insert for my transgene. Um, can I measure those multiple serotypes on the same plate for Stunner? Yeah, so you can do 96 samples and you can bucket them uh, for each sample. Well, you put them in sample groups and then you can assign a serotype to each sample group. So yes, you can measure up to 12 different uh, AVs uh, in one plate. Okay. And then we have a question here from Ramsey. Uh, can you talk about the uh, limit of quantif quantification, so the lower limit uh, for Stunner and the linear range? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, 
It's about uh, because all AAVs are a bit different depending a bit on the insert they have, but anything above one times 10 to the 12th VG per ML um, would be uh, good for standard to read both on UVVS and DLS. Um, so that's the bottom limit. I think on AAVs, the upper limit has not been reached yet. Uh, I don't remember, but theoretically it would be 10 to the 35th, 5th or something. Uh, so we haven't seen samples that reach anything close there. Uh, yeah, I think at that point you're starting to measure in milligrams per milliliter, maybe. Yeah. Not, not normally a problem for AAV. Um, there's a request. Uh, can you send me the paper uh, discussed through... Uh, yeah, uh, definitely. I would say just email us or get in contact with us through the website and we'll, we'll get you that information. Uh, so here's one. Uh, if I design a new AAV serotype, so I'm assuming changing around amino acid sequences, uh, can I change the algorithm settings to optimize uh, standards measurements? Yeah, so we have preset uh, the AAV serotypes, but you can adjust amino acid sequences, you can switch out viral proteins, you can play with the ratios between those proteins as well. So you can make it custom for your own uh, AV custom mate, um, and then use that one to calculate everything, definitely. Okay. Uh, and then another question, uh, asking for a little bit more details on the cal how uh, Stunner calculates tighter. Like for example, um, does the expected DNA mass uh, matter in the calculation? Very similar. To yeah. So there's a couple of, of calculations for tighter, of course, because we're using that combination of techniques. Um, but yes, the total amount of molecular weight of a capsid will matter. So all the different proteins uh, that built that capsid will matter. Um, and the same for the DNA. So we'll use all that information um, to calculate titers from the UVVS. Um, also a bit the same way from DLS, we'll use the molecular weight of either your empty capsid or your full capsid to get to titers. And then we'll comparing those titers that we've calculated from the different techniques. Um, but if you wanna get the full details, again, I would say get in contact with us and we can explain it in the actual details, but that will take us way too long at <laughs> this moment. It's a whole nother presentation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the way that I often like to, talk, to think about it is, you know, you have UVBiz and SLS and DLS, um, and that UVBiz tells you about protein and DNA. So you have a lot of different inputs all going in there, and they, they tend to um, help converge on a better answer. Um, so here's a question about the UVBiz, actually. Uh, can you go into a little bit more details on the deconvolution method uh, to go from the total absorbance to you know, the, the numbers for protein and DNA? Yeah, definitely. That's that's one of the things that makes this an unique, of course, because otherwise starting from UVVS would be very difficult. Um, but it starts with your capsid is built up with protein and DNA. So we're just looking at spectra for that single-stranded DNA for that protein capsid based again on the amino acid sequence. And then we'll fill that up. Uh, those are the two things we have. And so the software will find the closest to that or measured spectrum by just looking how much of that protein or how much DNA do I need to reach this original spectrum. And so it can really very accurately determine, okay, this is your amount of absorbance from protein. This is your amount of absorbance of DNA and then go from there. Uh, but without that on a general UVVIS system, I wouldn't try to start doing those calculations just with raw spectra. So yeah. that's really one of the essential parts of this uh, procedure. Yeah, especially when there can be other contaminants in there too, um, which actually, <laughs> a good segue, didn't, didn't mean that on purpose. Uh, so this question is about iodixinol. So where are the, the limits for iodixinol and how does uh, Stunner handle iodixinol when it's present in the UV vis? Yeah, so 0.0005% uh, by volume is the lower amount of iodixinol that Stunner can detect. And then um, I think we only went to 60% volume by volume uh, iodixinol. So it can quantify anything uh, between that. Um, one of the things with iodixinol is um, once it goes above a certain limit, it absorbs a lot. And so the UVVIS data we get is, is clouded a bit. So 
you won't get a percent full result anymore once you have too much iodexanol. But with the quantification of iodexanol, you can clean up your sample um, and actually know how much iodexanol you have left. And then, uh, yeah, until you have a pure sample. So even with high amounts of iodexanol, you can really still use Stunner to get a tighter range from DLS and uh, how much iodexanol you actually have in your sample. So the SLS and DLS still uh, kind of, what do they still deliver? Yeah, they, well, you can still see your aggregation, of course, because we still see that capsid versus aggregate window. And then we can still um, get quantified the titers from DLS and SLS. So you'll get a tighter range because we don't know what the percent full would be. Um, you'll get a tighter range, but that's actually a 1.6x range in most cases, which is uh, for AAV still a very short range. So you'll you'll still get a good idea what your titer is. It won't just be uh, uh, as reproducible or as specific as if we also um, can chime in or use UVVIS results. Uh, so, can you talk about uh, other applications? Uh, yeah, so AAV is not the only one. We have a, a bunch more applications for general protein samples, for anything with your nanoparticles. We can quantify RNA, for example, while it's in your um, while it's in your lipid nanoparticle. So there's a bunch of applications. I again won't be able to go in detail now, but Everything is on our website or just contact us if you want uh, the full list or for your sample specifically. Okay, and uh, also uh, where is this manufactured? What's the typical lead time? So all of those, uh, all of the standard systems are made in Ghent in Belgium, um, where we have a production and uh, the R&D team and all uh, here as well. I'm here as well. <laughs> Uh, and our um, standard lead time is about a week. Um, so very quickly turnaround times. Uh. Uh, and then again, there, there are a lot of questions. So we may go past uh, 9.30 just a little bit to try to answer as many as we can. Um, can Stunner be used for other viral vectors? And there's a question specifically about uh, Lentivirus. So this application is very specifically made for AV quant and optimized for it, but we can always give, uh, you can always get the deconvolution. So depending on what viral vector it is, for example, protein versus double-stranded DNA or RNA or anything like that can happen in, in a basic application. You can always still get your uh, DLS distribution, your aggregation information, but on other viral vectors, we don't have uh, the calculations optimized or anything to really get those calculated titers or that percent full information. Um, but you would be able to get absorbance and, and overall DLS information and all as well. Um, for example, for lentivirus indeed to check um, different purification steps to see uh, what cleans up your sample the best uh, overall. So not as optimized as for AAV, but definitely still um, to get results from those two techniques. Okay. Uh, and then another question about um, essentially how do we demo this system? So it's, you know, once we engage in, in talking with the sales team, is it possible to demo a system? Uh, yeah, so we have uh, sales and FAS people across the globe. So um, demos can happen either in our labs where samples are sent your way and then we'll measure your exact samples and, and just show you the data or um, depending where you are and all um, that's for sales to decide or if an instrument can come on site and all. Um, but yes, we definitely can do demos on your specific samples. Okay, that sounds good. We have a, a couple more questions that uh, I think we'll be able to get in. Let me see. I'm trying to find one that, that can apply to as many people as possible. Um, so I think we've answered lower limit. We answered a little bit about lentivirus. We answered a little bit about iodixanol. Um, so here's one more question. So the stability slides uh, show that samples had a lot of aggregation. 
Um, so there was, uh, I think, some of the case studies where we're looking at a lot of the aggregation of the samples. Um, so what kind of information does Sunder still tell you in samples where there's lots of aggregation? In other words, um, can you get a polydispersity index for those or what metrics are output? Yeah, so since we're doing standard DLS, you can definitely get a polydispersity index and all of that stuff. Um, if everything is aggregated, um, we won't have anything in the capsid size. And then the UVVIS data, you'll still get a tighter of it, but there's nothing at the correct size. So it will be all in light green or light blue, but you'll get what that would represent that. So you can still know from absorbance what tighter you could have, but realize that it could be something else as well because you don't have the correct peak. If you still get a peak there, you'll see um, basically your light blue bar and light green bar grow, um, showing, uh, as we like to call it, assembled protein or assembled DNA. So you know I have this amount of protein and DNA, but actually, according to DLS, only a small part of it is at the size that we want it, all the rest is aggregated. So it's a good metric, but in generally um, for your AVs, you wanna have the least amount of aggregation possible. Um, and so that's really where you would focus, but you still get all the basic information, of course. So kind of still UVVIS and DLS information on, on those aggregates for sure. Um, all right, so thanks for ask, answering all those great questions, Nellis. Uh, thanks for a great presentation. I also wanted to thank everyone that joined us live today. Uh, if you want to have a deeper conversation with our team, uh, please do get in touch with us at info at unchainlabs.com or learn more from our website on unchainlabs.com. Uh, we would love to connect with you. And indeed, there's even more questions coming through the Q&A that we'll reach out and give you a uh, sort of conversation. Uh, so thanks again for attending our virtual seminar and hope everyone has a great day. Bye.